السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد سورة صاد سورة صاد آية نمبر 30 آية نمبر 30 Let's go أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم ووهبنا له ووهبنا لداود سليمان نعم العبد إنه أواب إذ عرض عليه بالعشي الصافنات الجياد فقال إني أحببت حب الخير عن ذكر ربي حتى توارت بالحجاب ردوها علي فطفق, مسح فطفق مسحا بالسوق والأعناق ولقد فتنا سليمان وألقينا على كرسيه جسدا ثم أناب قال رب اغفر لي وهب لي ملكا لا ينبغي لأحد من بعدي إنك أنت الوهاب فسخرنا له الريح تجري بأمره رخاء حيث أصاب والشياطين كل بناء وغواص وآخرين مقرنين في الأصفاد هذا عطاؤنا فمن أو أمسك بغير حساب وإن له عندنا لزلفا وحسن مآب And to David we gave Solomon an, an excellent servant Indeed Solomon, an excellent servant, indeed he was one repeatedly turning back to Allah. Mention when there were mention when there were exhibited before him in the afternoon the poised standing racehorses. And he said, Indeed, I gave preference to the love of good things over the remembrance of my Lord until it, i.e. the sun, disappeared into the curtain of darkness. He said, Return them to me, and set about striking their legs and necks. And we certainly tried Solomon and placed on his throne a body. Then he returned. He said, My Lord, forgive me and grant, grant me a kingdom such as will not belong to anyone after me. Indeed, you are the bestower. So we subjected to him the wind blowing by his command, gently wherever he directed. And, he, and also the devils of jinn, every builder and diver. And others bound together in irons. We said, This is our gift, so grant or withhold without account. And indeed, for him is nearness to us and a good place of return. All right. لما أثنى الله تعالى على داود وذكر ما جرى له ومنه أثنى على ابنه سليمان عليهما السلام. After Allah praised his slave David and mentioned what has happened to him and with him. Allah praised the son Solomon. Uh, peace be upon both of them. فقال ووهبنا لداود سليمان أي أنعمنا به عليه وأقررنا به عينه. Meaning we bestowed Solomon as a gift upon Dawood and we made him the pleasure of his eye. نعم العبد سليمان عليه السلام. What an excellent servant is Sulaiman peace be upon him. فأنه اتصف بما يجب المدح. He was characterized with that which necessitates praise. And what is that quality or trait that makes him praiseworthy is the fact that he is one who repeatedly, repeatedly turns back to Allah. So he returns to Allah in all of his affairs by deifying him and by uh, returning. والمحبتي and love والذكري and remembrance of Allah والدعاء and the supplication والتضرع and the uh, begging تضرع is when you beg Allah you beseech Allah والاجتهاد في مرضات الله وتقديمها على كل شيء and striving and struggling in acquiring Allah's pleasure and, pleasure and giving that precedence over everything else ولهذا this is why لما عرضت عليه الخيل أو الخيل الجياد السبق when those uh, when those race horses were presented to him 
الصافنات أي التي من وصفها الصفون One of its descriptions its صفون وهي رفع إحدى قوائمها عند الوقوف And that is the horse that raises one of its legs when it's standing You know how the horses the, the horses that are used for for uh, uh, putting on a show one of their elite stances is that they stand on three legs and one leg they lift up and they kind of you know fold it up upwards وَكَانَ لَهَا مَنْظَرٌ رَائِقٌ وَجَمَالٌ مُعْجِبٌ and they those uh, horses had a, a very uh, premium appearance and uh, you know astonishing beauty خصوصا للمحتاج إليها specifically those who are in need of such horses كالملوك such as the kings and we know Sulaiman was a king فما زالت تعرض عليه حتى غابت الشمس في الحجاب make sure you guys turn off your wi fis so he it, it remained to be presented to him until the sun set in the until the sun appeared to be disappearing into the curtain or the darkness فألهته عن صلاة المساء وذكره So it distracted him from his evening prayer and from the remembrance that he usually engages in at that time. فقال ندما على ما مضى منه So he said out of regret regarding that which had happened to him. وتقربا إلى الله بما ألهاه عن ذكره And as means of drawing nearer to Allah with the same thing that distracted him from Allah. وتقديما لحب الله على حب غيره and to give precedence to the love of Allah over the love of other than Allah he said إني أحببت حب الخير وضمن وضمن أحببت معنى آثرت now within the meaning أحببت is the meaning of I preferred أي آثرت حب الخير الذي هو المال عموما وفي الموضع المراد الخيل meaning I gave precedence and I preferred the love of wealth, generally and specifically in this context, the horses, over عن ذكر ربي, over the remembrance of my Lord, حتى توارت في الحجاب, until it disappeared into the curtain of darkness. ردوها علي, bring them back to me, فردوها, so they brought it back, they returned it to him. فتفق فيها مسحا بالسوق والأعناق, أي جعل يعقرها بسيفه في سوقها وعناقها. So he started striking them with a sword in their legs and their necks. The very horses that had astonished him and that were beautiful and because they distracted him from Salah and they distracted him from his wird, from the remembrance that he used to engage in Adhkar al-Masa perhaps or whatever it, it, it could have been during the time of legislation. So in appreciation, or in making up for that mishap, he decided to eliminate the cause of distraction that distanced him from Allah for a, even though it's something that is يعني, you could say minor. Bismillah. Minor in comparison to what we do today of never ending negligence. Sulaiman. أي ابتليناه واختبرناه بذهاب ملكه وانفصاله عنه بسبب خلل خلل اقتضته طبيعة البشرية. We have tested Sulaiman, meaning we tried him and we tested him by the absence or the removal of his uh, of his kingship and his uh, kingdom and his separation from it because of a defect that is of natural of human nature. وَأَلْقَيْنَا عَلَىٰ كُرْسِيِّهِ جَسَدًا أَيْ شَيْطَانًا And then we place on his throne a body. The Sheikh said meaning a devil. قَضَى اللَّهُ وَقَدَّرَ أَنْ يَجْلُسَ أَنْ يَجْلِسَ عَفْوًا عَلَىٰ كُرْسِيِّ مُلْكِهِ وَيَتَصَرَّفَ فِي الْمُلْكِ فِي مُدَّةٍ فِتْنَةٍ لِسُلَيْمَانِ فِي مُدَّةٍ فِتْنَةٍ فِي مُدَّةٍ فِتْنَةٍ سُلَيْمَانِ سبحان الله. Allah decreed that that devil would sit on his throne and he will run the kingdom during the time where Sulaiman was being tried. ثُمَّ أَنَابْ Then he returned. Sulaiman إِلَى اللَّهِ تَعَالَى وَتَبْ So Allah then, uh, so عفواً, Sulaiman then returned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he repented. وَقَالَ رَبِّ اغْفِرْ لِي وَهَبْ لِي مُلْكًا لَا يَنْبَغِي لِأَحَدٍ مِنْ بَعْدِ إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْوَهَابِ فَاسْتَجَابَ اللَّهُ لَهُ So Allah responded to him. وَغَفَرَ لَهُ And Allah forgave him. وَرَدَّ عَلَيْهِ مُلْكَهُ Allah returned his kingdom to him. 
وزاده ملكا لم يحصل لاحد من بعده and Allah increased him in more more dominion and more sovereignty that didn't happen to anyone after him no one got that after him وهو تسخير الشياطين له يبنون ما يريد ويغصون له في البحر يستخرجون الدرة والحلي and that is the uh, subservience of the shayateen to him uh, wherein they build whatever he wants and they dive into the sea and they bring out for him the pearls and all types of, uh, of, of adornment uh, from, the, from the sea. وَمَنْ عَصَاهُ مِنْهُمْ And whoever among them disobeyed him قَرَّنَهُ فِي الْأَصْفَادِ وَأَوْثَقَهُ Whoever disobeyed him, he used to uh, he used to basically uh, tie them, bound them together in, in irons and in chains. Uh, now, the, the, uh, let me just finish this. وَقُلْنَا لَهُ هَذَا عَطَاؤُنَا We said to him, this is our, uh, this is our gift. فَقُرَّ بِهِ عَيْنًا So, please your eye with it. فَمْنٌ عَلَى مَنْ شِئِتْ So then, bestow, grant whomever you will. أَوْ أَمْسِكْ مَنْ شِئِتْ Or hold, withhold from whoever you will. بِغَيْرِ حِسَابُ without account. أي لا حرج عليك في ذلك ولا حساب لعلمه تعالى بكمال عدله وحسن أحكامه. So uh, there's no there's no hardship upon you. There's no uh, uh, you know there's no criticism against you. No accountability because Allah knew about the uh, justice that He had and His good judgment. Now the point I wanted to highlight here is the term إنك أنت الوهاب. It's a reminder to our brothers and sisters that Al-Wahhab is one of the names of Allah Jalla Jalaluhu Taqaddasat Asma'u. And therefore those who call uh, Muwahideen, Wahhabis, are belittling the name of Allah Jalla Jalaluhu. Out of hatred for a man, a shaykh, uh, uh, shaykh al-Islam, wa mujaddid uh, qarnihi, a mujaddid al-qarn fi asrihi, uh, Al-Sheikh Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab, who they hate uh, more than they hate Iblis because he brought back Tawheed and ruined their worship of graves and dead people. The deviant Sufis and Ash'aris and Maturidis and Jahmis and Shia and all these deviant groups in the Ummah, they, uh, they find pleasure and get a kick out of uh, calling us Wahhabis in as a derogatory term and these feeble-minded semi-creatures don't whether they realize it or not they're actually mocking Allah's name they're mocking Allah's name because his name was Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab they couldn't call him Muhammadis they couldn't call us Muhammadis I would be in reference to the Prophet ﷺ. so they said oh no the Prophet very important can't mess with him but Allah himself no problem we will not call them Muhammadis because that would be uh, an insult to the Prophet Muhammad But Abdul Wahhab, so we call them Wahhabis Adi, Adi. Because in the first place, Allah is not on their list of priorities. Their priorities are dead men. Their priorities are their imams. Their priorities are, you know, the uh, whoever else they call besides Allah. The Prophet Muhammad himself is more important to them than Allah. That's why in Qasidat al-Burda, al-Mashura, they said, وَمِنْ عُلُومِكَ عِلْمُ اللَّوْحِ وَالْقَلَبِ And part of your knowledge, O Muhammad, is the knowledge of the pen and the preserved tablet. Therefore, making the Prophet ﷺ more knowledgeable than Allah. Because the knowledge of Allah is in the pen. Allah commanded the pen to write everything. And everything was written in the preserved tablet. And they is the المن الطبعدية The من عُلُومِكَ part, part of your knowledge. Oh, Muhammad, his knowledge of everything in the preserved tablet and that what the pen wrote. <laughs> so those people, they they love the Prophet ﷺ more than Allah. So surely they will call us Wahhabis and they have no problem with that. Yet, you know, yapping all day and repeating that name as an insult and as a criticism and as a as though we are a deviant group of people. Even though we say, subhanAllah, if we are Wahhabis, then indeed we are. We are following Al-Wahhab, Jalla Jalaluhu wa Taqaddasat Asma'u. And we believe in what Allah Azza wa described himself with and what the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam described Allah with and what a lovely bunch we are. What a lovely, lovely bunch we are. Alhamdulillah. 
Don't think that this reward given to Sulaiman is only for uh, Sulaiman or Solomon is strictly for the dunya and without or exclu excluding the hereafter. Rather, he will have in the life to come a great, great uh, reward. That's what Allah said, and indeed for him is nearness to us and a good place of return. الله الله. So he's among those who will be near to Allah, who will be honored with all types of honors from Allah. Type. Now we have a fossil, which is basically a, a chapter or a disconnect or a, an interruption to the flow of tafsir, wherein we're going to do some of the benefits from the story. Fossil. فيما تبين لنا من الفوائد والحكم في قصة داود وسليمان عليهما السلام. So a, a, an in, a, a pause or an elaboration on what uh, on highlighting what benefits and uh, wisdom or rulings we deduced from the story of Dawood and Sulaiman peace be upon them both. فمنها أن الله تعالى يقص على نبيه محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم أخبار من قبله ليثبت فؤاده وتطمئن نفسه. First, it is Allah عز وجل Allah narrates upon the Prophet Muhammad عليه السلام the news of those who were before him in order to keep his heart firm and so that he will find tranquility and comfort. ويذكر له من عبادتهم وشدة صبرهم وإنابتهم ما يشوقه إلى منافستهم والتقرب إلى الله الذي تقرب له والصبر على أذى قومه and that reminds him of their worship and the, the high level of patience they displayed and their constant return to Allah that which will make the Prophet Sallallahu aspire to compete with them in drawing near to Allah the one who they drew near to and to be patient over the harm of his people. وَلِهَذَا فِي هَذَا الْمَوْضِعْ لَمَّا ذَكَرَ اللَّهُ مَا ذَكَرَ مِنْ أَذِيَةِ قَوْمِهِ وَكَلَامِهِمْ فِيهِ وَفِيمَا جَاءَ بِهِ أَمَرَهُ بِالصَّبْرِ وَأَنْ يَذْكُرَ عَبْدَهُ دَوُودِ فَيَتَسَلَّ بِهِ That's why when Allah mentioned in this context, when Allah mentioned of how the people of the Prophet ﷺ harmed him and them, and them speaking ill of him, and what he brought, Allah commanded him to be patient, and then he mentioned to him Dawood in order for the Prophet ﷺ Comfort and, re and find uh, repose um, and, and counsel basically in, in the story of Dawood. So, was the first benefit? Second benefit Allah praises and loves strength in His obedience. Allah loves the strength of the heart and the body. Allah loves the strength of the heart and the body. And my brothers, my brothers and sisters in Islam. I've seen many of y'all, many of y'all bow like 90-year-old people bow. Your rukur is similar to the rukur of a person who is about to die in two and a half minutes. It is a shame for a young man or a young woman who are physically healthy, who don't have any uh, def deform de deformity, who don't have any uh, uh, spinal cord issue, their vertebra is sound. If they don't have any broken backs or whatever to be bowing like a what do you call that the the candy of Christmas? You know the the candy that goes like this. It's like the, the cane. You look like the top of the cane. Aib, aib. When you worship Allah, stop. When you worship Allah, bow like. 90 degrees like the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to about 90 degrees, 90 degrees. They said if you placed water on his back, if you place water on his back, it will remain put. It will remain put. Yes, the candy stick, candy cane hook, all of them are correct. It will remain in its place. The water will not fall off the back of the Prophet Muhammad Alayhi Salatu Salam. So your ruku, your sujood, your qiyam is that of a man. Some people don't even know how to get up from sujood. They get up from sujood by putting one foot in front of them. They, so they move like half a meter forward. And then they get up as though they're like a gorilla or a dinosaur. 
What is going on with the Ummah? Can you guys please stop talking in the background? Subhanallah. How many times am I going to say that? So you need to bow with strength. And that's why we've always encouraged physical fitness for the Muslims, males and females. Worship Allah with strength. When you go on Hajj, if you go on Hajj, you should be the one pushing people on their wheelchair. You shouldn't be the one pushed on the wheelchair. You should be the one who, if you are doing sa'i and you see some old man or old woman in a wheelchair and they're unable to go up, you should be the one who's able to push them up the, the ramp and down the ramp. If somebody fainted, you should be the one who's able to pick them up and move them to the side of the road or take them to the hospital or put them in the ambulance. So Allah loves it. Allah loves the strong believer. Strong in iman, strong in body. And ask Allah in your dua to give you strength. That Allah Azza wa Jal makes you strong in both cases, both spiritually and physically. The stronger you are, the more beloved to Allah. فَإِنَّهُ يَحْصُلُ مِنْهَا مِنْ أَثَارِ الطَّاعَةِ وَحُسْنِهَا وَكَثْرَتِهَا مَا لَا يَحْصُلُ مَعَ الْوَهْنِ وَعَدَمِ الْقُوَّةِ Because you're able you, to acquire obedience, uh, beauty of obedience, abundance of obedience, excellence of obedience, like ta'at meaning acts of worship, that which you're unable to attain with weakness and lack of strength. So you see the weak person can barely make ruku', can barely make sujood, can barely sit between the sajdatayn, can barely can barely pray. He's like he's exactly like as the munafiqin were described. They come to the salah kusala. They are lazy, lazy as though they're being dragged into the hell. So have that strength and that resolve. And that the slave should strive to acquire the means to attain strength. الكسل, and not to be on the side and not to, to submit to laziness. Well, and batala is when you're a bum, when you are a bum. Some people are programmed to be bums. They do they have nothing to do. All they do is bum around all day, yap and talk and get a get and socialize, 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 and socialize. Just absolute waste of time. No, no deen, no dunya. Mind you, we're not telling you to be reading Quran the whole time and do memorizing a hadith the whole time and to become Shaykh al Islam. No. But if you're not benefiting in your deen, yeah, at least benefit in your dunya. At least do something that will be productive for you in your worldly life. Don't waste your time on nothing. And we're not saying also all you're going to do is both. There will be some idle, idle time. You will play some game. You will have some conversation. You will chit chat with your friends. You'll, you'll have your, your, your relaxation time. But everything has to be within reason. And there has to be priorities. There has to be priorities. So when your priorities are flipped, and when you give importance to the things that should be uh, at the bottom of the list, you put them on the top of the list, then naturally the things that should be on the top of the list will go to the bottom of the list. If you have a list of things and there's priorities, and you keep raising the things that should be at the bottom, so that they go on top, then those which are on top are naturally going to go to the bottom. And that's why you find some Muslims are exactly like the Sheikh said. Kasal, batala, just uh, uh, laziness. Batala is bumness. You're just a bum. Al-mukhilla bil-quwa al nafs And those will affect your strength and will weaken yourself as well. So those who know, know. Wa minha. أن الرجوع إلى الله في جميع الأمور من أوصاف أنبياء الله وخواص خلقه. And among the benefits that returning to Allah in all matters is from the traits of the prophets of Allah and those that are elite among His creation. كما أثنى الله على داوود وسليمان. Just like Allah praised both David and Solomon. بذلك. With that. فليقتدي بها بهما المقتدون. So let those who are seeking leadership take them as leaders. وَلْيَهْتَدِي بِهُدَى بِهُدَاهُمْ السَّالِكُونَ And let those who are seeking guidance be guided to their way. أُولَٰئِكَ الَّذِينَ هَادَ اللَّهُ فَبِئِهُدَاهُمْ اِقْتَدِهُ Those, it is those whom Allah has guided, so with their guidance, follow. Uh, number four or number five? Number four. وَمِنْهَا مَا أَكْرَمَ اللَّهُ بِهِ نَبِيَّهُ دَوُودِ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامِ مِنْ حُسْنِ الصَّوْتِ الْعَظِيمِ What Allah has bestowed 
and honored his uh, prophet Dawood with the ab absolutely outstanding, beautiful voice. الذي جعل الله بسببه الجبال الصم والطيور البهم البهمة يجاوبنه إذا رجع صوته بالتسبيح. That which made the mute mountains and the animals, the birds that are, you know, they're, they're unintelligent. They were responding to him and echoing his tasbih whenever he would do tasbih. وَيُسَبِّحْنَ مَعَهُ بِالْعَشِيِّ وَالْإِشْرَاقِ And they would also glorify Allah Azza wa Jal along with him both in at night and in the early morning at the time of sunrise. Now. وَمِنْهَا أَنَّ مَنْ مِنْ أَكْبَرِ نَعَمِ اللَّهِ عَلَى عَبْدِهِ أَنْ يَرْزُقَهُ الْعِلْمَ النَّافِعَ العلم النافع ويعرف الحكم والفصل بين الناس كما امتن الله به على عبده داود عليه السلام and one of the greatest favors of Allah upon a slave is that he grants him beneficial knowledge may Allah make us among them one of the greatest bounties of Allah that he gives you beneficial knowledge why? so you will know the rulings therein and you will know how to judge between the people just like Allah had praised or bestowed upon his slave Dawood alayhi salam. So this is a reminder for all of us to strive in acquiring Islamic knowledge because with Islamic knowledge, you'll be able to differentiate between truth and falsehood. And you will know who's upon the truth and who's upon falsehood and who speaks with evidence and who speaks with ignorance. And you will get to understand everything that's going on. Without knowledge, you will never get it and you will never understand. And you will oppress others in the process. Bismillah. وَمِنْهَا اِعْتِنَاءُ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى بِأَنْبِيَائِهِ وَأَصْفِيَائِهِ عِنْدَمَا يَقَعُ مِنْهُمْ بَعْضُ الْخَلَلِ بِفِتْنَتِهِ إِيَّاهُمْ وَابْتِلَاءُهُمْ بِمَا بِهِ يَزُولُ عَنْهُمُ الْمَحْذُورِ the special care of Allah towards His prophets and those whom He has chosen from slaves that whenever a defect or some mishap happens on their part, Allah tests them with that and he, uh, ex he tests them and with that which will remove that difficulty or that problem. And they become better than their previous state. So they're good. They do a little issue. Then Allah guides them to repent. And so when they repent, they become better than their initial state. كما جرى لداود وسليمان عليهما السلام just like it happened to داود and سليمان عليهما السلام ومنها أنا مقدم أن الأنبياء صلوات الله وسلامه عليهم معصومون من الخطأ فيما يبلغون عن الله تعالى the prophets peace be upon them are infallible and cannot make mistakes in regards to what they convey from Allah uh, because this is a, this was a point of contention the other day when we were discussing the the, the same topic. Because, because the objective behind the message that Allah sends cannot be acquired except through that. There could be on a personal level some of the sins or violations that happen as a result of the natural state of the human being. As we mentioned with Yunus alayhi salam, remember? However, Allah Azza wa Jal immediately uh, uh, guides them and he and he's kind to them and he basically protects them from those uh, shortcomings. So the messengers are ma'asumeen. They are infallible when it comes to conveying to the people the deen of Allah. In terms of themselves, however, they might fall into some violations and then Allah Azza wa Jal immediately guides them to repent from them and to be better than they were before, which is an excellent uh, reconciliation between what appears to be two conflicting stances. وَمِنْهَا أَنَّ دَوُودَ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامِ فِي أَغْلَبِ أَحْوَالِهِ لَازِمًا مِحْرَابَهُ لِخِدْمَةِ رَبِّهِ That Dawood alayhi salam in most of his affairs, he was... Uh, he was uh, dedicated to his mihrab, which is his place of worship, in service of his Lord. That's why the two uh, uh, adversaries, they had to, uh, no, the two contenders basically had to climb the wall in order to reach him. 
لأنه كان إذا خلى في محرابه لا يأتي أحد He used to be when he would be secluded in his worship in his place of worship no one would come to him فلم يجعل كل وقته للناس مع كثرة ما يرد عليه من الحكام He did not dedicate all of his time to the people in spite of the, the, the frequency of the people needing him to judge between them بل جعل له وقتا يخلو فيه بربه وتقر عينه بعبادته Rather he allocated time for himself where he will be in seclusion with his Lord and where he will find pleasure in his worship of his Lord. And that will help him in being sincere in all of his affairs. And among them is that you need to follow certain etiquettes in how you enter upon the people in charge and the rulers and their likes. فأن الخصمين لما دخلا على داود في حالة غير معتادة ومن غير الباب المعهود because when those two contenders entered upon داود in, in, in an unusual manner and from an entrance that is not customary فازع منهم واشتد عليه ذلك ورأه غير لائق بالحال he was, he was uh, alarmed by them and that was يعني it, this was, this was uh, he, he found a problem in what they did and he saw that this was not difficult at all ومنها أنه لا يمنع الحاكم من الحكم بالحق سوء أدب الخصم وفعله ما لا ينبغي. And among them is that the ruler or the, the one who judges should not be prevented from judging with the truth because of the ill manners of the uh, the contenders or because of an action they did that is not appropriate. ومنها because even though they climbed the wall, that would still basically advise them. ومنها كمال حلم داود عليه السلام. Among them is the, the, the excellence of the forbearance of Dawood alayhi salam. فَأَنَّهُ مَا غَضِبَ عَلَيْهِمَا حِينَ جَاءَهِ بِغَيْرِ سَيْدًا He did not become angry with them when they both entered upon him without any uh, without seeking permission. وَهُوَ الْمَلِكُ While he's the king, وَلَنْ تَهَرْهُمَا وَلَا وَبَخُمَا And he did not scold them or reprimand them. وَمِنْهَا جَوَازُ قَوْلِ الْمَظْلُومِ لِمَنْ ظَلَمَهُ أَنْتَ ظَلَمْتَنِي أَوْ يَا ظَالِمْ and among them, the permissibility of the oppressed one to say to the one who oppressed him, you oppressed me or you are an oppressor. And you can see that I use that name quite frequently on social media. Because by Allah, we get oppressed a lot. Alhamdulillah. Or statements of this nature saying that you've transgressed against me. Because they said we are two contenders who have uh, wronged each other. What was the word they used in the tafsir, in the translation? Al-Muhim. وَمِنْهَا أَنَّ الْمُخَالَطَةَ بَيْنَ الْأَقَارِبِ وَالْأَصْحَابِ وَكَثْرَةِ التَّعَلُّقَاتِ الدُّنْيَوِيَّ الْمَلِيَّ بُوْجِبَةٌ لِلْتَّعَادِ بَيْنَهُمْ Subhanallah. The frequency of mixing with relatives and friends and the mutual attachment to the worldly life and to, the, to wealth it necessitates enmity between them. وبغي بعضهم على بعض and the transgression of some of them against others وأنه لا يرد عن ذلك إلا استعمال تقوى الله and nothing will prevent a person from that except applying the fear of Allah والصبر على الأمور بالإيمان والعمل الصالح and being patient on these matters by having faith and righteous deeds وأن هذا من أقل شيء في الناس and that this is very very few very very scarce scarce very scarce among people ومنها أنا مقدم أن الاستغفار والعبادة خصوصا الصلاة من مكفرات الذنوب الله أكبر that that seeking forgiveness and worship especially صلاة is among the expiators of sins فإن الله رتب مغفرة ذنب داود على استغفار وسجود الله عز وجل made the forgiveness of the sin of داود uh, uh, dependent upon his استغفار and his prostration ومنها Excuse me. إكرام الله لعبده داود وسليمان بالقرب منه وحسن الثواب. The way Allah honored his slave Dawood, his slaves Dawood and Sulaiman by being near to him and giving him a good reward. وأن لا يظن أن ما جرى لهما منقص لدرجتهما عند الله تعالى. And that no one should think that what happened with them uh, is means for them to be at a lower level with Allah. وهذا من تمام لطفه بعباد المخلصين. This is from the perfection of Allah's kindness to his uh, sincere slaves. أنه إذا غفر لهم وأزال أثر ذنوبهم در الله when he forgives them and he removes the consequence of their sin أزال الأثار المترتب عليها كل الله removes all of the ramifications of that حتى ما يقع في قلوب الخلق even that which may occur in the hearts of the people فأنهم إذا علموا ببعض ذنوبهم وقع في قلوب قلوبهم نزولهم عند درجة مرولة because when the slaves 
become aware of the violation or the sin of the Prophet, naturally it will degrade them in your heart from the original state. Allah removed those ramifications. Uh, and that is not something that is uh, mighty upon the most generous and the most forgiving. أن الحكم بين الناس مرتبة دينية تولها رسول الله وخواص خلقه منها judging between the people is a religious uh, state that was handled by the messengers of Allah and those closest to him those, those chosen among his creatures وأن وظيفة القائم بها الحكم بالحق ومجنبة الهوى and that the obligation of the one who judges between the people is to judge with the truth and to avoid whims and desires فالحكم بالحق يقتضي العلم بالأمور الشرعية. Judging, judging with truth necessitates having knowledge of legislative matters. والعلم بصورة القضية المحكوم بها and having knowledge of the reality of the matter that he's judging regarding. وكيفية إدخالها في الحكم الشرعي. How to apply the legislative ruling upon the reality of the matter. Context. فالجاهل بأحد الأمرين لا يصلح للحكم سبحان الله The one who is ignorant of one of these two matters is not befitting to be a judge ولا يحل له الإقدام عليه and it's not even permissible for him to put himself forward and judge between the people ومنها أنه ينبغي للحاكم أن يحذر الهوى ويجعله منه على بال that the, the judge should be wary of desires and that he should it should be on his mind at all times فأن النفوس لا تخلبن because you cannot يعني you cannot uh, eliminate this inclination towards your desires from from souls بل يجاهد نفسه بأن يكون الحق مقصودا he should strive against himself that he, he should always seek the, the truth وأن يلقي عنه وقت الحكم كل محبة أو بغض لأحد الخصمين that Allah removes from him at the time of judging any type of love or hatred he has to either one of the contenders ومنها and among them أن سليمان عليه السلام من فضائل داود سبحان الله سليمان is from the virtues of داود ومن من لله عليه حيث وهبه له and from the bounties of Allah upon داود that he granted him سليمان وأن من أكبر نعم الله على عبده أن يهب له ولدا صالحا may Allah make us among them and from the greatest favors of Allah from the greatest favors of Allah upon a slave is that he grants him a righteous child from the greatest favors of Allah upon a slave is that he grants him a righteous child. May Allah Azawajal make all of our ch children righteous and knowledgeable. فَإِنْ كَانَ عَالِمًا كَانَ نُورًا عَلَى نُورٍ And so if he is knowledgeable, then it becomes light upon light. So not only that the child is righteous, but the child should also carry the banner of his father in his ilm. And he should exceed him in ilm. He should be better than his father. Of course, the father is going to have shortcomings. The son should strive to be at least equal to his father or better than his father. He, he knows his father's flaws. So he should strive not to replicate his father's flaws. But the good aspects that his father has, he should have those under his belt. So you have your father's skills and abilities and knowledge and uh, whatever under your belt and then you exceed him by being better than him in the areas where he fell short or he was incomplete or he did not do a, a, an ideal job that is the the uh, ideal scenario let alone the son is completely lost and it's a valley of his own so it's a complete it's a loss for the father and it's a loss for the child so that's why we should, you know, invest into our children in this regard. Even if, they, even if they show resistance, sometimes they don't know what's best for them at this age. But maybe down the line, they would appreciate some of the uh, restrictions that were placed on them. Because when it's all said and done, this will be the best thing that would have happened to them when they meet Allah. As opposed to them being let loose to do whatever they want. And they will surely squander their life and they will squander their hereafter, after and they might completely lose track of even guidance some children you 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 remove the the restriction of them for five minutes in five minutes they drown in 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 a puddle of water in a puddle of water he, and he's six feet tall you have to pick him up from his shirt like a mosquito and put him on this on this on the curb so that he can catch a breath 
as soon as you let go, he goes into the 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 black, uh, the dark side, not the black side, sorry, the dark side of the world. So be careful and keep track of your children and work and remind and work and remind and continue to remind. Perhaps one of these reminders will resonate and will kick in and will have an impact on them. Uh, ومنها, and among them, Allah Ta'ala ala Sulaiman Among them is the praise of Allah for Sulaiman when he said, What an excellent servant. He is one who often repeatedly returns to Allah. ومنها, الأعمال, الأخلاق, and among them is the abundance of Allah's good and his excellence to his slaves that he 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 bestows upon them the ability to do righteous deeds and he gives them good character and then he praises them for it even though he is the grantor and he is the giver and he is the provider so Allah allows you to do the good deeds and he praises you for the good deed that you do Allah gives you good character and then he praises you for having a good character even though it's all from Allah وَمِنْهَا تَقْدِيمُ سُلَيْمَانَ مَحَبَّةِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى لَمَحَبَّةِ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ Sulaiman giving preference and being altruistic to the uh, uh, in the love of Allah over the love of everything else. ومن كل ما شغل العبد عن الله كل ما شغل العبد عن الله فإنه مشؤوم مذموم فليفارقه وليقبل على ما أنفع له. That anything that distracts a slave from Allah is wretched and belittled and and blameworthy. Let him separate from it, divorce it, and let him uh, invest into that which is more beneficial for him. ومنها القاعدة المشهورة. And among them, and pay attention, ya akhwan. Pay attention, ya akhwan, ya khawat. The famous principle. Man taraka shay'an lillah, awwadahu allahu khayra minh. This is a hadith of the Prophet, alayhi wa sallam. Whoever abandons something for the sake of Allah, Allah will give him something better in return. Fasulayman, alayhi wa sallam, aqra al-jiyad al-safinat al-bahbubata lil-nafsi taqdeema li mahabbatillah. Sulayman slaughtered those racehorses that were uh, beloved to, this, to, 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 to people as means of giving preference to the love of Allah. فَعَوَّضَهُ اللَّهُ خَيْرًا مِذَلِكَ So Allah made it up for him with better than that. بِأَنْ سَخَّرَ لَهُ الرِّيحَ الرُّخَاءَ اللَّيِّنَ الَّتِي تَجْرِي بِأَمْرِ إِلَى حَيْثُ أَرَادُ وَقَصَدْ That Allah facilitated for him the wind, which goes by his command. وَغُدُوهَا uh, where, where else? غُدُوهَا شَهْرٌ وَرَوَاحَا شَهْرٌ It comes for in one month and it returns, in, it goes in one month and returns in one month. وَسَخَّرَ لَهُ الشَّيَاطِينَ أَهْلَ الْإِقْتِدَارِ عَلَى الْأَعْمَالِ يَتِي لَا يَقْدُرْ عَلَى الْأَدَمِيُونَ Allah facilitated and subdued for him the, the devils who are able to do things that humans are unable to do because they're from the jinn. Subhanallah. So when, uh, when a woman uh, doesn't go pray in the masjid because she's trying to protect herself from fitna or she doesn't want to be fitna for the men or because her children or whatever her reason may be, Rest assured that Allah Azza wa Jal will give her the reward of that because she only left it for the sake of Allah. And in my case and in case of many other people who are of the opinion that you cannot divide Qiyam into two parts, uh, Taraweeh after Isha and then again past midnight where you go to the masjid again because that's a bid'ah according to the position I follow. Whoever does not go to that Qiyam, inshallah will get the reward of that Qiyam and even more than that without even going because they only left it in order to comply with the sunnah of the Prophet والسلام, not out of laziness. So it's a very important lesson. وَمِنْهَا أَنَّ تَسْخِيرَ الشَّيَاطِينَ لَا يَتَكُونُ, لا تكون لِأَحَدٍ بَعْدَ سُلَيْمَانِ Subhanallah. That the subservience of the shayateen to work for someone is not for anybody after Sulaiman alayhi salam. وَمِنْهَا أَنَّ سُلَيْمَانَ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامِ كَانَ مَلِكًا نَبِيًّا And among them that Sulaiman was a prophet, a king prophet. يَفْعَلُ مَا أَرَادْ He does whatever he wills. وَلَكِنَّهُ لَا يُرِيدُ إِلَّا العدل, but he only wants justice. بخلاف النبي العبد unlike the prophet who's a slave he's not a malik فإنه تكون إرادته تابعة لأمر الله his will is dependent and, and uh, connected with the command of Allah فلا يفعل ولا يترك إلا بالأمر he doesn't do and he doesn't abandon except with the command from Allah كحال نبينا صلى الله عليه وسلم وهذه الحال أكمل just like the affair of our prophet والسلام, and that is a better and more this is a more complete affair than the affair of the prophet who's also a king because the king has his own will, independent, whereas the prophet does not do or abandon except by the command of Allah. Jalla Jalaluhu wa taqaddasat asma'uhu. And with this, inshallah, we conclude today's dars.
We are at ayah number 41 where we'll be discussing the story of Ayyub alayhi salam. Naam. الحمد لله طيب أين نحن قال إمام قال قال إمام إيش ملكاء عن ألف عمل أهل المدينة في زماني أحب أحب إلي من واحد عن واحد I have no idea what you're saying brother doesn't even make sense in Arabic I'm becoming a worse Muslim day by day I need advice on how to stop the cycle of downfall All right, well, whatever it is that is causing your fall, you need to, just like we discussed in today's class, you need to do firaq, separation from it like the like Sulaiman did with the horses. Obviously, you don't become worse except of because of a sin. Whatever that sin is, disconnect from it 100%. Remember the hadith of the man who committed, uh, who killed 99 souls, eventually killed 100 When he finally found a sheikh to advise him, he told him to go and travel to another land. So the scholars say you need to separate and move away from the environment in which you are falling into the sin so that you don't fall into that sin again. And don't despair from the mercy of Allah and don't give up and continue to beg Allah Azza wa Jal to uh, guide you. Now. Walaikum salam, rahmatullah, hala bi shaykh adil. Will you be going back to the regular time of the class after Ramadan ends, inshallah? Yes, of course, bi idhnillahi azza wa jal. Naam, of course. What? The notorious belt or the infamous flip-flop. I personally go with the belt since you don't have to be skilled user. With it, whereas with the flip-flop, you have to possess ultimate precision. No, not necessarily. To each, uh, there's a benefit. And uh, <laughs> basically, the whole idea of the flip-flop is that you don't need to have precision. You whack him where he doesn't expect. Now. What is the reward and the virtues of fasting six days of Shawwal? Well, the hadith clearly says, من صام رمضان ثم أتبعه ستة من شوال كان كمن صام الدهر أو كما قال صلى الله عليه وسلم Whoever fasts the month of Ramadan then follows them with the six days of Shawwal it's as though he fasted the entire year or also known as the entire lifespan. And the scholars say that's because the good deed is multiplied by 10 So 30 days of Ramadan is equal to 300. Six days of Shawwal is equal to 60. That's 360. The days of the year are around 356 in the Hijri calendar. So it's as though you fasted the whole year. And if you do this every year, it's as though you have fasted the whole life. Your whole life. So that is the virtue of the six days of Shawwal. Now, that's why some of the scholars say you cannot fast the six days of Shawwal until you have completed The days of Ramadan. And that's why if for the menstruating sisters who might have missed five, six, seven days of Ramadan, before they fast the six days of Shawwal, they should first compensate and make up for the missed days in Ramadan and then proceed to the six days of Shawwal so that the hadith can apply to them. Because it says, Man sama Ramadan. Whoever fasts the month of Ramadan, then he follows them up with the six days of Shawwal. So if they fasted 25 days out of 29 or 30, it doesn't count as that they have fasted Ramadan. Kapish? Now. No? Don't you want to wait till there are more people? All right. This is the an ad, the advertising session, courtesy of the Samsung tab. Here we have the famous book, which is the Thalathat Usul in Kiri Kiri version. The Kiri version of Thalathat Usul, which you can get from... I could, I'm doing it, bro. It's the other way. Yeah. Which you can get from Amazon. As you can see, this book teaches children uh, about Allah Azza wa Jal. It is color-coded. It teaches them basic Arabic words. So you have, uh, you know, the, the vocabulary at the end. You could see the colors, shams, 
Ashjar, Zuhur, so they can become familiar uh, with those terminologies. Uh, this book is available on Amazon. Uh, you could buy it uh, in the grayscale or you could buy the Kindle version. So there's an, uh, a, an e version, electronic version, and you could actually order a book that they will deliver to you. Um, and while you add it, and we're going to post, inshallah, the link in the chat, you also have the famous book, which is the uh, lecture that has been delivered in the past, The Seller of Musk. I think this book was a bestseller, mashallah, tabarakallah, on Amazon. It's, a, it's an excellent uh, Eid gift. So if you're often confused what kind of gift do you give to the people, maybe you just want to buy a few of these books. And when you visit people, at least you leave something beneficial. Also, the book, mashallah, tabarakallah, is uh, high quality with a lot of narrations, some fatawa of the scholars. I had from the book of Allah, no, uh, no uh, objects or uh, drawings of uh, living beings. So, you know, a drawing of a, of, a, of a pillar or of a perfume. This does not constitute something that is Islamically problematic. So it's another book that is recommended. Again, uh, there's no harm in, in trying to benefit ourselves and benefit others in the process. Barakallahu fikum. Tayyip, wa alaikum salam. You said a while back you used headband for your beard. But is it annoying because every time you do wudu, your beard becomes a mess again? I only use, listen, let me, just, let me explain myself. Okay, first of all, the, 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 the rubber band is a very tiny one. It's, it barely fits the finger. When I shower sometimes, when I shower, instead of my beard going everywhere, if it's disheveled, I will basically tie it into that. I get that little rubber band and tie my beard like this while I'm sleeping. So that when I wake up, the beard is somewhat shaped the same way that you see right now, which is the way I like it to look as a V-shape as opposed to being bushy. I don't like it to be bushy to the outside. I like it to be facing downward. So I do whatever I do so that my beard is not like in the past. We're used to kind of bush out. Now it pushes down. Or if I want to be an Arab, it bush down. The bottom line is I only use this rubber band for uh, a duration of time while I'm sleeping or if I'm going to travel or something like that. Obviously, when I make wudu, I remove it. It's so easy. It's a tiny little rubber band. You put it, you remove it. It's not that big of a deal. Hey, now. Next. Marrahar. Wa alaykum salam. Ahsan alaykum wa alaykum. Sheikh, can we take from Dr. Hatim al-Hajj? Who's that? I remember his name. I saw he was a guest contributor on Yaqeen Institute. Khali walli. No, no, no. If a person is, is dealing with Yaqeen Institute, he's, uh, he's axed out. Allah al-Musta'an. Nah. You can't possibly align with these people and be upon the aqeed of Al-Sunnah wal-Jama'ah and the manhaj of the Salaf. No way on earth. Nah. If a local masjid is fundraising of an imam, is fundraising for an imam, but we don't know the aqeedah of the imam will be. Should we donate? Uh, don't donate. Don't donate. They are the, the fundraising for an imam. Allah al-Azim, it's weird. Okay, you fundraise for, for helping needy Muslims, for supporting our brothers and sisters in, 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 in Palestine and Gaza. You, 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 you fundraise for a, a noble cause. To bring an imam, I remember in, in, in LA, uh, they were fundraising to buy the imam like the state of the art, you know, the year car. He had like a car nicer than the cars of all the all the masjid goers. Like the imam, the masjid was driving this fancy Honda uh, van. It's not a van. What do you call those cars? Like the Odyssey minivan. He had like a like a premium. We're we're going there on a bicycle, on a skateboard. Dude is is rocking. You know, uh, I don't know thirty thousand. Uh, this was a gift given to him. The money they raised from the people, man. <laughs> they raised the money. It's not an SUV. They raised the money from the people to buy him a car. No, of course, don't. Don't put your money in, in something like that. There's usually one rich guy who will just shoulder the whole thing. Put, put your money in something beneficial. Now, uh, since I began practicing my religion more seriously, I've been called Wahhabi and extremist. Welcome to the club. I tried to research it online, but found mostly negative opinions about him. Okay. Next. Where is number two? Uh, well, whatever it is that you said afterwards, Habibi, uh, accusing him of causing fitna and fight against the Ottomans with the British. Are these claims true? No. 
on this channel, on this channel, uh, can you please find the link with uh, Jalal, Sheikh Jalal? We we actually hosted, uh, we hosted on a podcast a brother who who authored some of the greatest books in the English language about uh, the reality of Muhammad Abdul Rahab Rahimahullah. And we hosted him on this channel. So we're going to give you the link. Then you can search up that brother Jalal, Sheikh Jalal uh, Abu Rub. And then you will be able to find plenty of English lectures that tell you exactly the reality of who he was and these lies and allegations raised against him by the burnt out Sufis uh, who don't mind lying in order to, you know, uh, discredit him and, and make him seem like he's an evil man. Yeah, this setup is weird. Next. Hey. Hey, hiya Allah, Sheikh. Hala Sheikh. Marhaba Sheikh. How to find girl to marry? <laughs> Yo, <laughs> my man put find with capital letter. How to find girl to marry? How to find girl to marry? If I ask family, they'll find me someone who doesn't practice Islam at all, all barely. My masjid doesn't have imam either. What to do, Zakallah khair? Okay, so. <laughs> the, <laughs> your, your masjid doesn't have, you don't need to have an imam in the masjid. <laughs> Meet good brothers who look a little bit older or age similar to yours and find out if they have sisters and if they're fathers, find out if they have daughters. Look for good brothers who have daughters, good brothers who have sisters and tell them, I'm interested in getting married. It's not a hype. It's not a hype. Y'all be tripping, man. Qwerty. Qwerty U-I-O-P. The heck is Qwerty U-I-P? We barely finished with your Qwertiness. Okay. I looked at it. Ah, the whole thing? Yes. You're missing the uh, brackets. You mentioned someone attaining more knowledge than his father. However, is it possible for someone to attain more knowledge than their sheikh? Do you know of any examples from the Salaf? Of course, uh, it's possible. Uh, the Arabic uh, famous proverb, Perhaps a student will exceed his teacher. Uh, so it is very likely that they that that happens it is possible that that happens if the child acquires everything that his father has and more which his father may not have been able to do so if the father is still continuing to acquire knowledge and invest into himself then maybe it will be a challenge but it could be that it's not the case it could be that the father has other limitations and the son has more uh, access here, Amatullah said, Sheikh Al Usaymi and Sheikh Ruhaili, I believe, said that about Abdul Razak Al Badr and his father. Naam. Wallahu alam. Yalla ya hujjaj. Do we receive rewards for solely pleasing parents? Absolutely. Absolutely, you receive rewards for solely pleasing parents. Solely. What is the ruling on asking Allah for seeing his face in Jannah? Jannah al-Firdaus, Hur al ain even though you sin privately a lot. Should we feel ashamed for asking? Ishhada. Ishaq, what do you take before you come to the class? Ishaq, why? Why, brother? وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمْ اُدْعُونِي أَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ إِنَّ الَّذِينَ is that what the ayah says? Wait, I need to get you the ayah because I don't want to get philosophical. It is, صح? Hey, Allah said, call on me, I will respond to you. Those who disdain from my worship, from calling me, from worshiping me, from supplicating. And the hadith of Prophet ﷺ, that Allah Azza wa Jal love, Allah, Allah hates it when you don't, don't make dua. Allah hates it when you don't make dua. Allah wants you to make dua to him. What do you mean feel ashamed? Don't feel ashamed. On the contrary. On the contrary, because if you are sitting, ask Allah to forgive you and to convert your bad deeds to good deeds and to make you in Jannah and Firdaus and Hur al the whole shebang. 
The whole religion is based on you begging Allah to forgive you. You're not the only one, Habibi. We're all sinners. We are all sinners, Ya Sheikh. Ishaq. Are the students ruling Afghanistan righteous? Should we look up to them? What? What students ruling Afghanistan? I don't know who rules Afghanistan. Ah, ya mahtal. I gotcha. Taliban. <laughs> All right. That was smart. Wallahi, I don't know if they're righteous or not. But if they are Muslim rulers, we don't speak ill about them. So my consistency in how to deal with the people in charge is that even though I may differ with their with the, the way they treat the Salafis and the uh, and taking out some of the Sunni uh, Salafi uh, ulama, but I don't publicly uh, criticize them and call them out and have a campaign against them like the Muslims do with the rest of the world. So we say uh, if uh, whoever is able to advise them in private, let them go and advise them in private. Other than that, they're Muslim rulers. We hold back from saying anything ill about them. Now, I'm, I highlighted those things for you to know that even though I'm aware of those issues, I still follow the principles of the Sunnah of not criticizing the ruler publicly. So you won't think, well, you didn't say anything because there's nothing, they haven't done anything wrong. No, there are things that are happening wrong here, there, everywhere. But we don't call them out because there's no benefit in calling them out. There's no benefit in publicizing those sins for reasons we've explained in the past a million times. Wa alaikum salam, rahmatullah, akhi al-aziz. It's acceptable to do qiyam at my own home and read Quran all night instead of the masjid during these blessed 10 nights. Local masjid is too noisy and lacks seclusion. No problem. It is permissible, absolutely. All right. Thank you for your classes, even in Ramadan. The thoughts on Abdul Qadir Jilani. Also, what are the conditions of istighatha, please, if any? Could you also educate about Wasila, please? I have a lecture. Uh, all these questions are answered. I, ironically, all of your questions are answered in a single lecture titled Tawassul. So please go on my channel and look up the lecture Tawassul. And it answers your question, inshallah. I get made. I gave maid 500 and said it's Eid. I.e. money gift given in our culture on Eid to friends, fam. My niya was to write for zakah. Is it permissible to do so or will it be considered hadiyah and not zakah? Uh-huh. You told her that it's a hadiyah. Well, you don't, you don't have to inform the person you're giving zakah that it is zakah. But, but then you don't have to tell them anything. Now, the fact that you said that this is a hadiyah, I, I don't know. Allahu a'lam. Uh, what? What is that? Next. What is the wisdom behind the impermissibility of criticizing a Muslim ruler who is a tyrant and the permissibility of criti criticizing a non-Muslim ruler? The wisdom is the wisdom is that this is the command of the Prophet Ali salatu salam. This is the command of the Prophet Ali salatu salam. He was said, Oh, Messiah of Allah, we're not asking you about the pious rulers. We're asking you about the evil rulers. And they named some of their sins. And he said, Ittaqullah. He said, Fear Allah. And listen and obey. And the hadith is, I believe, in Sahih Muslim. There are over 100 narrations that I've discussed on this channel in the past. I, I think I read like 20, 30 of them. The wisdom behind it is that criticizing the Muslim ruler, even though he's a tyrant, is going to bring about absolutely no benefit. Rather, it will, it will uh, uh, escalate the situation with the people. Whereas a non-Muslim ruler doesn't have the uh, the uh, hurma and the sanctity of a Muslim, therefore you're able to speak about him. And even then the scholars say, and what is the benefit of speaking about even a non-Muslim ruler? If there's no benefit, then you shouldn't speak about a non-Muslim ruler either. But they don't have the same sanctity as the Muslim ruler. This is the command of the Prophet Ali wasalam. I don't know why people want to negotiate with the Messenger of Allah. Why people want to debate with the Messenger of Allah, Ali salatu wasalam. Ya yeah, Jama'a, over a hundred narrations telling you to obey the ruler and not to speak against him, even if he strikes your back and take your money. 
and even if they are and they have the bodies of humans, the hearts of devils, you don't like them and they don't like you. And all these ahadith explain them, explain in detail their transgression and their tyranny. And yet you're told to be quiet and to listen and obey in obedience. If he tells you to disobey Allah, we say we're not taking any orders from anyone who tells us to disobey Allah. But anything other than that, shh, so that there will be peace and security for the Muslims. So that we will we, we will be able to stand on our feet. The, the Ikhwanis are actually the agents of the, the West and the Jews. The agents of the Zionists and the West are the Ikhwanis, whose job is to destabilize Muslim lands like this uh, Hassan al-Didu. They want to destabilize the Muslim land so that the people can revolt against the ruler so that we can have what happened in other nations so that nation will suffer for years on end. And Shia, for years on end, they continue to suffer in order to rebuild themselves which takes hundreds of years. So the ummah will always be in a state of weakness. And then the, the kuffar will basically benefit from the concept of uh, divide and conquer. Divide and conquer. So they make us fight within each, amongst each other. They weaken us and then they take control of the Muslim lands. Had we obeyed the Muslim ruler, even if he was disobedient and tyrant, at least there will be stability and security. So we will have some strength, which will be the, 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 the foundation upon which we could the ummah can retrieve its strength and its dignity. But these people are too stupid to understand. They're too stupid to understand. So they want to. They want the Jordanians to go and, and revolt against their ruler. And they want these people to revolt against the ruler. And, and then those rulers have support from the West. So then they use external weaponries to, to, to kill their own citizens. Just like in Syria. To kill their own citizens. Huh. Who's not doing enough? Okay, they're not doing enough. Allah will not ask you about them. They don't have, they're not doing, we know that, we know they're not doing enough. Khalas, let them not do enough. Allah didn't place you in, if you were in charge, go tell them, Ya they're not doing enough. You as a Muslim man, mind your business. As a layman, you mind your business. You guys distracted me, man. I don't even know what I was saying. The bottom line is, I know it's related, but let me finish my thought. The bottom line is, you, you, they destabilize these countries and then we remain perpetually weak for hundreds of years. Look at Iraq, it has not recovered. Yemen has not recovered. Syria has not recovered. Libya has not recovered. None of these countries have recovered from the Arab Spring. None of them, none of them has recovered from the Arab Spring. Look at the lands where there are violations and there are sins and they are, but the ruler, the rulership is under control. Whether or not you like the rulership or you like them or not, look at those countries, there's stability, there's security, there's, uh, there's military strength, there's, there's uh, people worshiping Allah. The, the region that the people keep criticizing, at least, at least it's on its feet. At least it's making a mark in the world for the, for the better, for better or worse. But no people, emotional, wackos on keep with keyboards Allah al -Azim, you speak and then you become an agent to zionist or bootlicker wow yeah we will never hear the end of it Allah al -Musta'an. here i said it hello aki professor what is ruling on takfiring a believer you it goes back to you Whoever says to his brother, as for the hadith, ya kafir, ba'a biha ahaduhuma. One of them will end up with it. You're not allowed to pass takfir on a believer just like that. Now. Am I allowed to shave the hair that connects to my mustache? And can I shave my mustache? Allah does my hair. Also, does my hair have to be all even? Yeah, you could shave, you could shave, the skull is different on shaving the mustache. Some of them say that you should trim it. Some of them allow shaving it. So there's a valid difference of opinion among the scholars regarding the mustache. Uh, as for your hair being even, uh, that's ideal. The sunnah is that your hair is all even so that you can uh, be safe from qaza. And qaza is understood to be shaving one part, keeping one, or having a shade, uh, a fade, or whatever they call it. A shade, a fade. Yani, uh, some say it's makru, some say it's haram. 
it's it's a lot of discussion about it. But if you want to be on the safe side, having one uh, length for your entire hair is is perfect. And check out your brother right here, man. All the hairs are the same length. Mashallah, tabarakallah. Shaved off and dumped in the trash. Because why not? Wa alaikum salam. The hospital is government and giving free meds to Umrah and Hajj patients. But I give medicine to my friends in waste and wasta even without our exes. Is it considered theft? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, sister Fatma. Obviously, if how do you know whether you can or you cannot? Go ask your uh, boss. If your boss allows you, you're good to go. Can I buy and use vanilla extract because all of them I find have alcohol ingredients? List? Only a small amount though. Yes, you, uh, yes, you can buy uh, vanilla extract. That small amount is negligible. How's that Samsung Galaxy ring working out for you? I cannot elaborate on the secrecy of our products or other products. These are uh, private information that I keep to myself. Uh... Uh, but as we say that it's permissible to ask the Prophet or make dua to the Prophet <laughs> when we are in Mecca and near his grave. This can be done while facing him. Does this have any basis? No, yeah, it has a basis among the Kuffar. Yes, it has basis among the Kuffar of Quraysh. The Kuffar of Quraysh made the same exact arguments. We only worship them so they can get us closer to Allah. They said these are our intercessors with Allah. Exactly what the Quraysh said. Of course there's no base for this in Islam, bro. Watch my lecture, Tawassul. Naam. Barakallah, uh, Fika, Barakallah. I just moved to a new Muslim locality and I've been receiving iftar from kind neighbors mashallah i don't know if they do riba what should i do with their food eat it ya sheikh ya akhi eat the food inshallah they're doing rib rib riba rib 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 riba it doesn't bother you the prophet sallam used to eat eat from the food of the jews and they were as allah said ya kuluna suht they would eat magnitude of haram money their riba was nothing for them you could you could enjoy the food brother now أهلا يا معلم أهلا أهلا كيفك ستيزي شو أخبارك اشتقيل لك is it permissible to make dua during intimacy with our spouse <laughs> what do you mean in the middle of this <laughs> in the middle of there's, there's a dua you say before you commence بسم الله اللهم جنبنا الشيطان وجنب الشيطان ما رزقتنا that's a dua before you commence you want to make dua during the act والله I don't have an evidence for it Astaghfirullah. <laughs> Y'all be tripping. <laughs> hey, Ma'mool in the house. Barakallah fikum wa fikum barakallah. So we can't raise our hands to make dua after salah. Uh, no, you can't. When uh, is a list of times we can raise our hands and when we can't raise our hands for dua. You can raise your hands for dua at all times except. At other times of worship where it's not legislated. So let's say you're sitting at home and you decide to make dua, it's sooner for you to raise your hands. But make it after every salah, after every adhan, after every wudu, after every dhikr, you start coming up with your own hand raising procedure, then it becomes a problem, oh senor. Muchas gracias por la familia. Oh no, whenever I see that name, I know it's bad news. Salam, Ustad, wa alaikum salam. I suffer from really bad cat allergy, and mom has one in her house, so I stopped going because because my day is paralyzed. If I go and she gets mad at me for never coming over when invited, and sometimes thinks I'm just making an excuse to never visit her. Am I being disobedient, son? To her? Uh, well, there, there's there's more to it. Why don't you wear a mask? I mean, I don't understand. Your mom knows that you're allergic. And she knows that you really struggle and then she still keeps the cat and tells you to come over. Somebody needs to advise your mom until we can tell you whether you're disobedient or not. Now, uh, I'm not identifying a particular person while, while it's back 
backbiting, if I'm not identifying a particular person while I was backbiting, then it's not considered as backbiting. Correct. So the same apply if I say, oh, the guests at my house are so untidy and there are two to three people and the person I'm speaking to know who is being referred to. Ooh, that's a tough one. Yeah, because you're basically speaking about all three of them. That's, uh, but I, I know the feeling. Uh, but if, if, I've ever, if I've ever fallen into backbiting, Allah mustaan, may Allah forgive me that it would be that. Because I'm a clean freak, OCD perfectionist, and almost everybody, I hope they don't watch this, ev almost everybody we invited to our house were not exactly like-minded. You should see me when a brother comes with his son and, you know, we're, we, have, we offer them like some cake or something and the son's hand is all like saliva and leftover cake and he's like, ah, 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 ah. and then he comes in and then his father's like, say salam to Abu, say salam to Abu. I'm like, no, no, get out, get out of my house. And then the kid has all this food in his hand and he comes to give me salam. Then this is the perfect time I play games with them. I go like, ah, ah, ah no, no, not today. Man. Hey, come on. You know, <laughs> yo, then the whole time I'm just watching the kid walking around. Ah, he's about to drop the food. Ah. And then if he spills the food in front of the father, I will literally get up and get a tissue and wipe and clean. Let him know that I'm suffering over here. You know what I mean? Get a hold of your child, man. Control these crazy creeps that just all over the place. So uh, uh, I suffer big time with untidy unclean uh, uh guests so i you know i had almost reached the point that i don't invite people over because it's just too stressful you know what i'm saying <laughs> uh, you only know what's going on if you know me now nah. oh my god it's 11 20 guys we have children to raise waikum salam would it be disliked if someone took paper and pen into the bathroom to not waste time if he knew, he'd most likely take a while on the toilet. <laughs> I write you this letter sitting in one of the most comfortable places for me during the day. And then signature from the toilet with special orders, courtesy of my feces, with love. What is this, man? I don't know what you're writing in the bathroom, though. I mean, as long as you're not writing Islamic content, then you're good to go. But <laughs> if you just want to write, I don't know, author some some na some stuff, then, you know, hey, you know what I'm saying? Do you. It's just, I'll be tripping, man. <laughs> Love, Stan. Oh, alaykum salam. How to ask Allah in Arabic to aid you in lowering the gaze? You say, Allahumma a'inni ala ghadd al-basar. Allahumma a'inni ala ghadd al-basar. Now, Allah Alam. Khalas, I want to go. I want to go. Is there any evidence that can be shown to a masjid board against putting a declaration of the names of Allah and Muhammad next to each other? Yes. That when a man said, Masha'Allah, wa shit. When a man said, Prophet, Sallam, whatever Allah wills and you will, he said, Aja'altani lillahi niddan. Have you made me equal to Allah? Bal Masha'Allah, wahda. Rather, whatever Allah willed alone. So you, you show them a hadith from Kitab al-Tawheed and books like that that clearly uh, demonstrate the inferiority of the Prophet ﷺ to Allah. And so to place them next to each other denotes equivalence and equality, which is not the case. So now. All right, guys, that's enough. How do you achieve sincerity? By knowing that no one can compensate you for your good deeds but Allah. So why care about what the people think if they cannot pay you for your good deeds and they cannot admit you to paradise and they cannot save you from hell? All right, that's a wrap. That's a wrap. Inshallah ta'ala, tomorrow we will continue and we will have another uh, uh, session accordingly. هذا والله أعلم وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته